All right, guys. Well, um, my Wi-Fi should be getting fixed tomorrow. And uh, I ju I'm just hiring a guy. His name's Joe. And I will, I don't know. We're going to figure it out with you guys. You guys are the $20 tier. There's probably some sponsors. Uh, I believe he sent out the lithos. Um, I'm not sure. You know, uh, whenever you guys start getting them, just post that you got them so that we know because, well, it's just things getting, things are getting really crazy because of the book, the film. I think we're going to release the documentary on a streaming network on August 3rd. So I go into the festival. I don't want to wait. I'm a bitch. I just want instant gratification. And there's some people that have put money into it. Nobody's, you know, sweating me like, oh, I put money into it. I want to get it done. I just want it to be out. I mean, put together a badass film. Um, I showed you guys some raw footage and I even put a little cut on the sponsor tier. You know, I did that yesterday and I don't know. People haven't told me anything. <laughs> He's just thinking I'm a punk or something. But I'm busy. And I know no one wants to hear that. I say it every fucking day. I'm going crazy, guy. I mean, it's it's a lot. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm so grateful that I'm in this position. A year ago, I was at welfare banks, you know, uh, or at, at food banks, and I was on welfare. <laughs> I was sucking dick at bowling alleys, you know? I was like, D dude, you just rolled the turkey? I'll suck your cock for six bucks. And, you know, some guy's like, let's do this. Let's drink some Mountain Dew and let's just fag out. I'm like, all right, let's roll. So I don't have to do that anymore. Now I'm doing good. And that's because of you guys. And I fucking appreciate you guys. And yes, I lag on getting stuff to you. But you should know, anyone should know with me, you will always get what you have coming. I'll never not give it to you. I'm just disorganized. Now we got a new guy. He does everything. I don't have to worry about that. You don't have to like, comment, subscribe, none of that. Send me butthole shots. That's all I want. I'm collecting them. I'm going to start making like a baseball trading card series with buttholes. Let's get into the uh, China story. What are we on? We're on China 3. But China. Where did we uh, end last time? I'm dope sick. I just got off a plane. And I go into this bathroom. And there's a hole in the ground. And I have to shit. I have to do this sneezy spaghetti spewing diarrhea out of my asshole on a hole in the ground. At least I had painkillers, right? So, you know, we had talked about it. I don't know. I don't remember what had happened in the last video, but I know that I had gotten off the plane. I made it through customs with a bottle full of pills, which by the way, when you're strung out on heroin and you have strain you know, painkillers, it's like, Fiending for a cigarette and smoking tea. Yeah, people do that in jail. It's ridiculous, you know? Like, and the people come up to you, like, when you're in county jail, and they'll be like, hey, fool, uh, I got some tea, dog. You're like, what do you mean? What kind of tea? What do you mean smoked green tea? Why would we smoke that? I don't know. It feels like you're smoking something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm in. Seriously, that's how people are in jail. It's ridiculous. So it was like, oh yeah. So, you know, it, obviously you smoke tea, you're not going to get, it's not going to quell your, um, you know, it's not going to satiate your nicotine hunger. Hey, shh, I'm recording a video. Jeez. They're so ungrateful. I let them sleep in here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just such a good dude. Um, you know, but that's what painkillers are. You know, it's a, it doesn't get you well. So, you know, I was trying to snort the pills, which I did on the airplane. Now I'm eating them as powder. And it's just really, it's like my nose is running. I'm full blown dope. Sick. Remember, I'm 17 years old and I'm on the other side of the world. And when I get off the plane, I see a poster that says drug trafficking is punishable by death in the Republic of China. So now I'm at this hotel with my dad. And he got us like a nice suite and you could look down below and you could see this like courtyard and 
the fact that I was dope sick and the painkillers weren't doing anything. I was eating them like Skittles and they just were not helping me. So I'm having to endure the dope sickness. Now, I don't know, taking painkillers when you're kicking heroin like that. I mean, I was smoking it and people will always say that, well, the kick is worse when you're injecting it. I don't think that's true. I think that, I mean, when you smoke heroin, it's straight to the bloodstream. You know, it's a, just like a fast, uh, it's just as fast of a route as injecting it or <laughs> the less commonly used method of, of boofing, which I've been really into boof. Have you noticed that? I've really like been into boofing humor lately. I say it about everything. I'm like, let's boof a banana. Everyone's like, yeah, that's so funny. So I remember looking off this balcony and seeing this courtyard full of Chinese guys. Now, normally, Chinese guys are just Chinese guys. But when you're dope sick, Chinese guys look evil as fuck. You know, they're, <laughs> you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sorry for any of you Asians in the fan base. I don't, I don't think I have any Asians, but uh, even if I do, I don't know what all of you look like. Um, I'm sorry, you guys look fucking crazy when, when you're dope sick or on psychedelics too. Yeah, have you ever noticed that Asian people, they always look like the guy from Gremlins that like sold the dude, the Gremlin on the first, you know what I'm talking about? Like the old guy and he has like the weird like hat, and, like goatee and he's just, you know, Mr. Miyagi and uh, Karate Kid. All Asians guys look like that when you're dope sick or when you're kicking heroin. My dad had no idea what was going on. You know, it's just like, I'm not feeling well. And, you know, my dad always thinks he's an expert. He's like, well, it's probably the change of altitude. You know, we're in China after all. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I feel. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why I have diarrhea for sure. For sure. That's why I'm sweating. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to watch TV. So I turn on the TV and it's all Chinese shit. And it's like really conservative. Like when you're in another country and you see Asia, you see how like materialistic and gluttonous, like in America, you see stuff. This is like what you see, like a Coca-Cola ad, you know, you see like a polar bear butt fucking a chick and like some Monopoly guy snorting blow off their ass because we're a very gluttonous society. We like big tits. We like big dicks. Well, I mean, I don't, I like small dicks. And bomb personalities. We like big dicks, big asses, big tits, big cars, big rims, big dogs, big dicks. I already said that, but you know, no, no. Same big dicks. It's kind of cool. But I don't mean it. No, I'm just kidding. She's asleep. <sighs> But then you watch Asian TV and everything's all conservative. Like you don't see like big ass tits. You don't see cleavage. You just see like people in like turtlenecks. You know, it always sounds like they're saying like what? How's that even a language? Everything sounds but I guess that's maybe how English sounds to people that don't speak English. I don't know. I guess English is like the most complicated language but i don't know have you ever seen the way that like chinese like the little like hieroglyphic type font that they use or how they write stuff do you imagine having to write like that it's everything looks, looks like a fucking art piece it's crazy imagine writing a letter like that in china in mandarin <laughs> insane you know and i noticed the difference you know it's all the small differences like i had said i think in the last video something that's really interesting about china is that there's not trash on the floor you know, you look around China, it's, it's the most densely populated, I was in Beijing, China, it's the most densely populated city in the entire world, and there's no trash. There's no trash because if you litter, you like get your fucking hands cut off. I think everywhere you walk in China, there's people like missing hands or like missing chunks of their face. You're like, damn, I wonder what that guy did. And like someone's translating, they're like, he spit on sidewalk. You don't do that. But then like in the same country, you're seeing like puppies and kittens strung, like sh hanging on clotheslines, like on at kiosks and shit. There's like street vendors selling skin dogs. And I'll go up to them. I'll be like, hey, let's cut the bullshit. How much for the dog? 
then they don't speak English. But, you know, it's just kind of like a weird culture. Everything's densely populated. There's no litter. And everybody smokes cigarettes. Even the kids. It's population control. They, like, teach you in school to smoke. You know? Seriously. So, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you, like, what my observations were when I first got there. And you got to remember that they're heavily skewed because I'm dope sick at the time. <clears throat> when you're coming off heroin, you can't sleep. And you masturbate a lot. I've talked about this all the time. Now, normally, masturbating in a cell, when you have a celly, sleeping in a bunk bed with you is one thing. But when you're in a suite and your dad's in the next bed and you're just sitting under there pitching a tent with your knee and just jerking off to Asian bitches and turtlenecks, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird feeling. It is. Because that I've explained it a million times. For some reason, when you're dope sick and you jerk off, you get that temporary dopamine euphoria. So you're jerking off, distracted. That's not how I look. I don't make faces like that. I don't know what I look like when I jerk off. I should film it next time. There'll just be a video of me like looking at the computer, jerking off, but I won't say anything. And then I'll like add voiceover narration and I'll just like start telling a story. But the whole time I'll be beating off. And I'll just be telling like about Mike Virgin. I don't know. Sometimes these ideas just come to me. So I'd stay up and the whole time you're jerking off, you feel good. Then right when you come, boom, you're propelled back right into heroin withdrawal. Sucks. So I stayed up all night and you got to remember that. I, you know, I stay up all night the first night and this is important because this dictates the tone for the rest of the next day. So my dad was there because he was doing international consulting, you know, he started a national healthcare consulting firm called Ryan Associates. He named it after me. The 800 number for his company, he sold it. I don't know if it's still the same. I doubt it. The 800 number for the company used to be 1-800-666-RYAN. 666, of course, is the mark of the beast, which makes sense because I was always like some like, devilish dope fiend like my poor parents they're such nice people and they got this like satanic fucking junky son i'm not satanic but i don't know i mean i think about devils when i butt fuck who doesn't <laughs> so the next day i wake up and well i mean not really wake up whenever i say that i mean like the day started and i remember my dad because he had to do this consulting work sorry i'm all over the place it's because i've been I work all day and then at night when I like right now when I'm doing the content, it's really difficult for me to have the flow because I've, I, I've expended so much energy throughout the day. But my dad was there on a consulting trip because he owned this occupational healthcare consulting firm. Basically what that means is he would go into hospitals and he would teach them how to run their hospitals with better efficacy. He has like a master's in public health. He'd go there, he'd look at how they're running their hospital and tell them more effective ways to do so. That used to be a lucrative business until 9-11. You know, post 9-11, the middle class kind of just, you know, got really affected. Luxury businesses, like things that people don't need, kind of, you know, took a big hit. But this was just after 9-11. So it was still... He was still making good money and he was still traveling all over the world doing his consulting. So he, I think he took like three or four days off when we first got there just so we could go sightseeing. Now, he didn't know I was kicking heroin. I didn't tell him that, you know. He didn't know I was beating off all night either. You know, like just hoping that like the chick might like, you know, I mean, it was a turtleneck. So the only thing I could do was face shots, you know, just. All right, she's kind of doing like a cute smile. I'm going to get it. Ugh. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just like hoping that like she'll her face will be on there long enough so you have an image to beat off to. And then like it would like cut to some, you know, some, some like dragon or shit, you know, whatever, some Asians. And you can't beat off. I can't beat off unless I have an image. I'm not one of those guys that can like close my eyes and like just imagine sexual stuff. I'm a pervert. I have to see shit doesn't matter what it is 
You know, I mean, in prison, I beat off to Victoria's Secret catalogs. I feel like I'm in fucking fifth grade or something. That's what I used to do when my parents, when my mom's Victoria's Secret catalog would come or my dad's Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit edition. I just like see it in the mail. I'd be like, Ooh, grabbing that. I'd never give it to him. And then like when my parents would be looking for stuff that they thought I stole, they'd find like this cachet of like Victoria's Secret catalogs. My dad's like old Playboys and like, you know, I'm like really disorganized and messy. So there'd be like all these cum rag socks that look like, you know, uh, they, you know, when you make like the little starch ghosts in elementary school, like you put the starch on the ghost, they kind of just like stick there. My socks would look like that. I'd like draw like happy faces on them. My parents would be like, what is that? I'm like, it's a, it's a starch sculpture. Duh. But they'd know because it's with all the porn. Anyhow. Next day, because my dad had taken a few days off, if I can remember correctly, we went sightseeing. But we started off going out to breakfast. Now, I love Chinese food. I love it. I consider Panda Express Chinese food, even though it's not. I mean, it's fast food, but I like any Chinese food. It's good coffee. What I don't like is Chinese food first thing in the morning when I'm kicking heroin. Oh, it's just eating an egg roll when you're kicking heroin is like a fart manifesting into something tangible and you taking a fat fucking bite out of it. It's how disgusting egg roll smell when you're kicking heroin because you're, everyone knows if you come off opiates, you have a heightened sense of smell. So when you're eating this egg roll, it literally smells like a musty fart or like the inside of a pumpkin or something and you're just smashing it then it has that weird texture it feels like there's like worms inside of it i don't even know what what they put in egg rolls but you know what i'm talking about it's like, and i'm just sitting there and i'm trying so hard not to puke and like you know i noticed this right away anytime i'd walk in anywhere every girl would stare not just at me but me and my dad i didn't know why you know i was like huh must be because I'm hot, like covered in sweat, like drooling because I'm kicking so hard. But girls would always look at us, like a really weird look too. You know the look, like <laughs> I'm trying to lick your ass. It's not just like a normal, like, yeah, we should fuck. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to lick your asshole, dog. So I eat and we go on and we're taking cabs throughout China. And my dad... You know, if you've ever seen Problem Child with, uh, what is it, John Ritter? You know, my dad's like John Ritter and Problem Child, and I'm like Junior, a little redhead kid, even though I'm not redhead. I don't know what that guy's like now. He's probably a fucking straight heroin addict. I don't know how you can not be after being a child star like that. Like, everyone's like, oh, look, it's Problem Child. Do Problem Child shit. And you're just like, ugh. Life's unfair. Like, you start shooting up. But... You know, so my dad's like all jolly, like John Ritter was. He's like, oh, this is, isn't this cool? We're on the other side of the country. Asian women everywhere, huh? And I'm just looking at him. I'm like, uh. I was never like a, a, I don't know. I mean, look, I've been with, let's just say every race of women. I don't have a particular one. I, it's just about what's in the inside. But Asian girls were never my first choice. Some guys, have like the Asian fetish. It's all the same. I mean, you know, VIP tier. Pussy's pussy, man. You know what I mean? All right. So we're going to do this, 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 and that. It sounds horrible. We're going to go to the Great Wall. Then we're going to go to like an ancient Chinese burial site. Then we're going to go watch a magic show in Mandarin. I'm like, you know, he's like, Ryan, I got you a present. Thought you might like this. It's like some touristy, like, welcome to Beijing hat. And I just, like, put it on so I don't have to deal with it. So the first thing that we're doing is we're going to the Great Wall of China. As much as, you know, that's, like, one of the coolest things in the world, you know. When you're a kid, you you you, you have all the geography books and and in elementary school and junior high and like you see all the wonders of the world you see the great wall of china you see the egypts and pyramid uh 
Egypt's and pyramid. I always you notice that I'm verbally dyslexic. You see, dyslexive. I'm verbally dyslexic. Jeez, that was hard to say. The pyramids in Egypt, the Great Wall of China, San Diego. No, I don't know. The Hollywood sign in L.A. There you go. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else. The O.J. Simpson murder house. What? I don't know. Whenever I'm like on a tour in L.A., they always do the murder houses. Or like in this is where Humphrey Bogart lived when he first moved to Los Angeles. This is Quentin Tarantino's childhood home. That's where the Manson murders happen. <laughs> you know he did it, right? <laughs> you know, they always like, they're like in their like tourist voice and then they're like, you know he did it, right? And you're like, dude. So we get to the Great Wall and it's like not what I would expect. I mean, you see pictures of it and you think that like it's just a wall. You like walk up to I mean, there's some stairs and like you walk up to the wall and you can like take pictures on that's that i think it depends on where you're actually going to the wall you know um the where we went was like completely rural so we show up to this village and there's a ski lift yeah like when you go snowboarding or skiing you sit in a ski lift but this ski lift went like over this fucking can canyon i don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> went over a canyon it's literally the kind of shit where like if you, and there's no seat belt or anything and they're just like it's like some factory shit they're just putting like one group of people on the ski lift at a time and they're like tapping on the back like yeah good luck you're looking at it, it's like rusty you know you ever get on like a fair ride and like you see this toothless carny and you're like Dude, there's no way I trust this guy to put me in the zipper when there's a little pin that's going to keep me in this little cage. But usually I've had a few drinks. I'm like, fuck it. If I die, die. This is going to be right. Uh. Then you see like videos of like people falling out of Ferris wheels and you're like, oh my God, what? <laughs> thought that never happened statistically. Well, what's the fuck's that? Oh yeah, well, I mean, you... <laughs> You got, you know, you you have a a greater chance of winning the lottery, or getting hit by a shark, or getting struck by lightning. Well, how do you think the fucking person that that happened to felt? Try telling that to that family. Well, really sorry that that happened to you, but if it makes you feel any better, it's about as rare as winning thirty million dollars. Sucks that it was this that it was this one that your brother fell out of the Ferris wheel. But I'm just saying, it was rare. Because it does happen to people, right? So we get on this janky-ass ski lift. We go up. I'm not scared of heights, but I'm scared of communist country that don't like white people. And me and my dad are so out of place. Like, it's us and our little ski lift. And, like, you're looking at the one ahead of us, and it's, like, some, like, Chinese sweatshop worker that's, like, disobeyed. They're, like tied up in duct tape like a mummy they have like two like chinese communist like military guys on each side of them you're like damn that doesn't look good and then like you look behind you and like there was some like middle-aged woman and she's not even there you just see some empty ski lift chair and you're like oh my god so we keep going higher and higher we keep ascending and i'm looking down and the thing starts rocking and now my dad's scared of heights and I'm like, Dad. And he's just like catatonic. He's like, I'm like, Dad. And he just like, he's not even answering. I'm like, God damn, dude. Awesome. I'm dope sick. That swinging motion is making me incredibly nauseous. I'm already kicking heroin. That motion made me so I had to puke. And I keep telling my dad, Dad. I'm just stuck like that. Dad. I got a puke. Didn't say anything. So I'm just like, I lean over a little bit to puke. And I'm like, it, I'm so close to, we're probably realistically like a thousand feet up in the air. You know, we're looking and it's going higher and higher. And I'm like kind of dry heaping a little bit. And then I just let out this like hardcore syrupy, like projectile vomit. 
you're just seeing like chunks of egg roll come out. And my dad just comes out and he's like, hey, what's wrong with you? Your mother said nothing about you puking on the trip. I was like, how, how would she know? I don't feel good. Probably that bunk ass egg roll that we ate this morning. He's like, that was part of the continental breakfast. My dad always says, you don't know what you're talking. This is the best hotel in the world. It's not possible for them to give us a bad continental breakfast. I'm like, okay. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean it's going to be good food. My dad's like, oh, you know nothing about continental breakfasts. Shh. You need to let me do my, my video work. So I pay for your, uh, your little chew toys. So anyway, so I puked and I'm wearing like this black puffy jacket and I have my headphones and my MP3 and I I was listening to a lot of Wu-Tang, you know, Wu-Tang Forever specifically. I had a lot of songs from that album on my little primitive MP3 player. This is before iPods had come out. Get to the top and, you know, I puked. I felt horrible. But getting up to the Great Wall of China it really is a breathtaking image. So I was able to look out of the countryside and you look and you see this, you know, this seemingly infinite wall kind of meander into the cloudscape. It's really trippy. It's like being in like a Super Mario Brothers level. Like one of the cloud, remember the cloud ones where you're like in the cloud world and you're like flying? I just thought that was the dopest shit ever. You could like drop into the box and get the like magic flute. So perverted. Yeah, no, no, just suck on this magic flute, play the magic flute, the skin flute, and uh, you get transported to another world. I can only imagine the motherfuckers that write games like that. So, someone is blowing me up. No, I still don't have a new phone. I have my old one that's cracked and. You know, it's, I don't know if you can see, but I don't know. I will get one soon. Can't even like read stuff. Anyway, it's breathtaking up there. It's beautiful. My dad took a couple pictures and, you know, it's, it's all kind of made out of these very old stones. You know, it's like these big stones that they, who knows how long it took them. I don't even know. I, I mean, I learned this shit in school. I think it's like the Shanghai. Xing Hai Dynasty? I don't even know. I never paid attention. I was always like looking at girls. You know, I was always that weirdo. Yeah, like I would draw. I always did graffiti. And I'm talking about when I'm like 10. Well, it went from like Stussy's to graffiti. And then I'd like look at the hottest chick in class and I'd like stare at her. I do this at AA meetings too to this day. Well, no, no. I mean, I don't go to AA meetings and I'm monogamous. But I always do this thing when I'm in meetings or when I'm in school where I'll stare at a girl. And then like they'll look and they'll see me staring and then they'll look away. But then, but this is the trick. When they look back, you keep staring, just confident, right? And then they look back at you like that. And then they like start blushing. And if they blush, you know that you can fuck them. Well, it's really, it's inapplicable to when I was young. Cause that's kind of weird to talk about, but it's not about like in high school, AA meetings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Some prizes in the meetings, you know, for sure. I don't know why I was just talking about that. But anyway, so being up in this like magical place, being up on this great wall, momentarily distracted me of how sick I felt. And I didn't feel that sick. That's the thing with heroin addiction. Like when you first start getting dope sick, you just feel really shitty. It takes like a few years to get legit like train spotting sick where you're like in bed and you're like, like have the sheet and there's like dead babies crawling on the ceiling and you're like, ah, just like one more hit. Like, yeah, that doesn't happen like in high school. You know, when you get older, you get like, ah, dead baby. That's when dicks start getting sucked. When you get that strung out, you're like, oh, dude, I'll fucking, I'll cut off my tongue. I don't give a fuck. Oh, why don't you just suck this big old cock? You're like, okay. And then you do it and you're like, oh, I'm so gross. I got to do more drugs. So it's just not to think about this. This is gross. I've never done that. I've never been offered it though. You know, probably would if someone was like, eh. 
give you a quarter gram. What's up, fool? No, all right. Sounds like a bargain. What do I got to do? Just tell me what to do. YouTube it, dog. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going off on all these weird tangents. I hear my kid crying. Oh, it's just so hard to get these videos done with, you know, just to manage all the time to do it. But I love you guys, and I, I certainly try. After we saw the Great Wall of China, uh, I don't even, I, honestly, it's so long ago, I don't even remember the way back. I just remember buying like some, you know, collectible Wall of China t-shirt or something at the end in the village. Then we went to these like ancient Chinese burial sites. Now, the problem was now I've been dope sick for quite a while and I had some of these painkillers. I was taking them. They just really weren't doing anything to make me feel better. So by the time I got to these like ancient Chinese burial sites, you know, I just was full blown sick. I was in a bad mood. And my dad's like, you know, can you, can you please smile? You know, I had parents, is it that hard to get a smile out of you? And I'm just like, well, I mean, I'm kicking black tar heroin. <laughs> Life sucks. But I couldn't say that. I didn't tell him what the truth was. I was just, my dad's just like, wow. Would you look at the bricks on that? What do you think that is, Ryan? Indian clay? I'm just like, oh my God, dude. I was like, no, I, these burial sites are, are rad and all that, but I'm tired. I think I'm jet lagged. Can we go back? And my dad's like, are you, <laughs> we're in China, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You're just going to throw it away because you don't feel well. Take some Tums. I'm like, oh my God. I'm really sick. And now girls aren't just looking at my dad and I. They'll come up and say stuff in Chinese to me. I don't know what they're talking about. They'll just be like, Chaturitichotaja which could be anything like, Hey, every time I drink chai tea, I get in the mood for anal and I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know what that meant because they were just saying weird shit in Chinese and say stuff in Chinese. I wouldn't understand. And then they would kind of like make, you know, hand movements to let me know that they were talking about taking a picture with me. I didn't know who they were. I was like, so just imagine this. There's pictures of me in China with like some Asian girl with their arm around me. And I'm just like, like all dope sick. It looks like a fucking mug shot. You know, I'm like, and they would leave. And I had no idea what was going on. I was like, what, is it? what does that even mean? Why would someone come up and take a picture with me like that? Maybe they think I'm famous. I don't know. And that's when I started thinking. I'm like, man, I mean, there's like no white people in China. You, you hardly run into anybody that's not Asian. Like, we're deep in Beijing, you know? It's, like, really crowded, lots of mopeds, lots of motorcycles, lots of smokers, lots of girls that would look at me. And I started thinking, I'm like, damn, if I wasn't sick, I'd definitely be trying to get laid right now, you know? But, nah, too dope sick. Couldn't do it. So, that night, we go back to the hotel. And now my dad's starting to do like some of his work stuff. As soon as I get back there, I'm doing rails of um, painkillers and I'm running out. I mean, I'm taking handfuls, I'm snorting it, nothing's working. I'm just about out of everything. And my dad's doing work. And I tell my dad, I go, hey, uh, you know, I was smoking cigarettes as much then as I do now. I'm like, hey, dad, I got to go get a pack of cigarettes. He's like, are you sure? Like, yeah, can you just give me like 50 bucks? He's like, for cigarettes? I was like, I got to go get it converted and everything. He's like, all right. So he gave me, huh. excuse me, gave me American money. So I leave thinking, I'm going to go find heroin. Fuck it. It's, it's Asia. Where's all the opium bars, you know? So I start going around and first I have to go get my money exchange. Now you don't have to go to like a money conversion place like you would in the United States. Like you can pretty much go anywhere and just be like, Hey, I have this. Can you give me Asian money? And they give you like a fat stack. I have no idea if I was getting like what it was worth or anything, but you could like go into like a, like a, you know, little market or something and people would do that exchange for you. 
So I went and I did that and I started walking around asking people <laughs> for heroin. I didn't even use a slang name. It's not like I was like, hey, where's all the Chiba at? You know, I was literally going up to the most shady people I could find. And look, shady people in Asia are not sh- like shady people here in LA or in the, anywhere in the United States. The shady people there are like the corniest looking shady people you've ever seen. They're like Dragon Ball Z type people. Like, you know, classic like Asian boy band looking guys. Like they have like the bleached hair and like the hoop earring and the white shirt. They're like, they have like a moped and they have like a fanny pack. They're like putting their packs of cigarettes in there. And I go up to them. I'm like, hey, hey man, you got any heroin? And they'd be like, Andrea? I'm like, heroin 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 the drug drug us i'm like trying spanish they're just looking at me they're like Chico-dura? i'm like heroin heroin do you have heroin do you have fucking cocaine marijuana turkey based do you have anything like that and then, like, the other one would come up and be like, and they'd be like, body language. And then they'd like look at me and he'd be like, and he'd like pull out like his chain and be like, I was like, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound like you have drugs, you piece of shit. I'm out of here. And he'd be like, and he'd like put his hand on me. He's like, like trying to tell me something. I have no idea what he's saying. That didn't work. Jesus Christ, man. So I end up going to a bar. Now, the drinking age in China, I think, is like 25. It's not 21. You got to remember, I'm only 5'6", but I had like a tween beard at the time. I looked well over 20 because I was already smoking heroin off tinfoil. So I was already like kind of getting shot out. You know what I mean? And I was able to get into this bar. They didn't ID me or anything. I don't even know if they do ID you in China. And uh, Karina's going crazy up there with Nico. Um, he's supposed to be so what's way past his bedtime. What's he doing? Um, so I go into this bar and it's this very, very, very depressing bar. I, I have a lot of pictures and videos from this. So I can look through my computer and I can find it. But I have a lot of stuff from this period. So I go to this bar. It's very dimly lit. I'm dope sick life sucks more than one occasion while i was walking around i'm walking around the streets of beijing by myself telling my dad i was going to get cigarettes i'm on a full-blown mission to get heroin i go into this dimly lit bar and like everyone you know classic depressed bar where it's just like and you can smoke inside which i love so i go in there and i smoke i feel like an adult sit down at the bar put my head down hmm just like any drinker at a bar does. Like I just bring all of my, you know, all of my woes in there. See, and you know, the bartender comes up to me. He's like, and I'm like, I just point to a beer. Slams it down, start drinking it. Looking around, everybody's Asian. No white people. I'm like, fuck. This is a waste of time. At least I'm getting a beer. Beer sucks when you're dope sick too because of the the yeast and because of the, uh, you know, it's just, it's so filling. It just feels gross when you're drunk, when you're dope sick already. All of a sudden I see this big guy walk in, big buff white guy. He comes down, he sits next to me, he's like, hey man, what's up brother? Southern accent. I was like, hey. God, it's nice to see another American. He's like, oh, no, man, I'm not Mac- I'm not American. I'm fucking Canadian, man. Canadian? I was like, you don't, you don't sound like you're Canadian. He's like, I watch a lot of TV. So what are you doing here? He's like, I'd rather not talk about it. I'm like, what's that supposed to mean? Is this, guy, this guy's probably some, like, serial killer that's on the run. He's like, hey, how, uh, he's like it's your first time in, uh, in the Orient? And I was like... Yeah. Yeah. I said, you know, and to be honest, I kind of feel like a fish out of water. I'm 17. I'm probably not talking like that. I'm probably like, yeah, I don't fit in here. I just want to skate and do drugs and get pussy. You know, I was probably talking like that. 
He's like, well, you know, what you doing here? I was like, yeah, my dad's here on a business trip. I'm just tagging along. He's like, oh, the old tag along well, pops does business thing, huh? All right. All right. He's like ordering shit. I'm like, you know Chinese? I'm like, of course I do. Been here for many, many years. Cool. You know where I can get heroin? He's like in the, he's like in mid drink and he looks at me, he's like, excuse me? I was like, do you know where I can get heroin? Smiles a little bit, takes another pull of his drink. He's like, I do. Kind of depends on uh, how much money you got. He's like, it's not, it's not like it is where we're from. He's like, I hear it's pretty expensive because it's pretty goddamn illegal. I'm like, well, how much are we talking? He's like, well, how much you got? And I like pull out that. <sighs> I pull out that wad of money that I just got and converted. I was like, this, it's like a. I don't know. You know, I thought it was like 50 bucks. He's and he's his eyes just kind of wide and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I can definitely help you out. I was like, okay, cool. He's like, just give me the money and I'll come, I'll come right back. Even at 17, I already knew this dude was trying to run game. I'm like, nah. Nope. Sorry. I've been like burned for like half eighths of weed that way before, you know? We're like Someone walks up to me like at like the skate park and they're like, Hey brother, what's up, man? I'm you know, I'm from you know, from a different city. I got some good ass chronic in my car. You want to buy some? Yeah, let me get a half faith. Yeah, let me see the money. Snatch and they just run. I'm like, hey. So I wasn't going to let that happen to me there. He's like, well, you can come with me to get it. He's like, but I'm telling you right now, I don't know if you're cut for it. I was like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, I don't know if you're cut for it. Let's just say that we're, uh, we'd be going to a, uh, how do we say, uh, unsavory place i was like how long does it take because my dad just thinks i'm getting cigarettes it's like i'm gonna have you back in an hour let's go close out your tab it's like how do i do that he's like here give me some of that money and he just grabs like a few bills and he just throws it down on the table i follow him outside of the bar and we will get back into the rest of the china series in the next installment i know that it's been really hard for me to get videos out lately, but I'm really, really trying and I will try as hard as I can to start getting stuff for you guys. So, so it's almost like a daily thing for the $20 tier, $10 tier, sponsor tier to be getting exclusive content every day. As soon as I have all my business stuff sorted out, I really want to get in the position because I have a lot of content that we haven't even gone through yet. I'm just so, so tired recently. I appreciate you guys. You know, you guys are the nuts and bolts of how I support my family. And believe me, I am eternally indebted to each and every one of you. And I love you very much. See you next time. Palabra.